no actors, no scripts, no edits, just testimonials. What happens when a small sleeping city wakes up? Every state elected official has to take an oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. that your rights are safe and secure, fighting so that your kids can go to school, fighting so that you can go to church, and fighting so that you can hopefully one day eventually walk back into that assembly meeting and again turn on your open for business sign. Article 1, Section 6, it says the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition their government shall never be abridged. Is it being abridged right now? Yes! What is going outside? going on outside right now, a legal assembly, or is it actually a riot? AS 4472-31, it said public meetings of the Assembly School Board Commission shall be open to the public. Are they open? No. That the freedom of speech, every person may be free to speak. Are you free to speak in there? No. Or is it actually a riot? You know, we have a pretty good police department in this town. I've always thought we've had a good police department. I thought it's been well run. I thought they've been even handed when it comes to dealing with uh, um, criminals, especially violent criminals. Uh, we do have some instances where lethal force is used. I think in every single case, there has never been a question that it wasn't justified. Um, and so, why? the city council feels it necessary to handcuff the, uh, the police is beyond me. Um, unless their intent is to create a more lawless society than what we've already got here. I started it uh, with my friend, um, really just to practice what we preached to our kids, uh, to take a stand, and had no idea that it would grow. Here today at the library, the assembly and the mayor are not listening to the people. They're not representing what the people of Anchorage are actually saying. They're trying to push through these things right now that don't even have anything to do with coronavirus, or they're doing it with their own special interests in mind, or, you know, they're doing things... The, the people gave over 25 hours of negative testimony towards this homeless housing bill. Forcing people into poverty is just as bad as them getting sick with an illness. If you live paycheck to paycheck, if you don't have wealth accrued sitting in a fund that you can live off of for months, uh, you're being forgotten. You're being told that um, just, just stay home and we'll take care of you. Salvation Army found out that I didn't have any food and they were there, they were right here. And now I get food. I've had strangers on the internet find out about me and show up with food and drop it off. I've had amazing people out there that have nothing to do with the government help those like me. This is what the government needs, the officials need to look at is, doesn't matter what it costs, I've paid my taxes, I've been working since I was 11 years old, honey. I've paid for this care. I've paid to have the right to speak up and say, you're not doing this right. You're selfish, you're self-centered, and it's about time that you pull your big girl panties up and you started taking care of business because officials, come election, I don't think you're gonna be going back to the house. In the winter months, the early part of the season, where I really don't make that much money anyway, because we're kind of getting over that lean part, getting ready to get to, uh, you know feast or famine when it comes to uh, seasonal tourism here in Anchorage. Um, so what would I do? So what ended up happening was, is I had no choice. I had to close down. Um, I, in fact, literally had no choice because I was given an eviction notice, and uh, the judge uh, took both my home and my business of 10 years, and um, yeah, I was I was done. 
and uh, I just couldn't stay afloat. I couldn't bail myself out after six months of, of waiting for for this money that's uh, supposedly checks in the mail kind of a thing. Um, what are you supposed to do? You can't. At some point, you gotta you gotta kind of move on, you know. And I, it was hard at first to to let everything go, but what else was I to do? There was no money. Um, yeah, we had some unemployment. We had to wait three months, two months, three months, something like that, just to get the unemployment. And then that ran out. And now I'm down to $133 a week. That's what I live off of. And I'm basically homeless. Was with the company for eight years. Uh, one of the native corporations. And uh, they eliminated the entire department. So it wasn't just me. It was four other people that, uh, three other people that got laid off at the same time. But actually, I, I survived the first round of layoffs, and so I wasn't really surprised that it was coming. It's always a shock, but I wasn't really a surprise. COVID has really devastated the construction business down in the lower 48 because projects were shut down. Um, nobody was allowed to work because of the social distancing. Um, there was funding that was pulled uh, and redirected, and and so there was no work coming in, and, and it eventually just dried up. Up here, it was uh, the oil prices that were depressed to the point where there's just no work up on the up on the North Slope, and so a lot of our Alaska business is based on or dependent upon the oil industry, and there just wasn't any work. So it was it, it they held on as long as they could. I fully believe that, and it just got to the point where they they had to make cuts so they could uh, you know survive as a company. They are overreaching. Um, it says right in the Constitution of both the country and of the state that we have the, well, the state specifically says that we have the right to enjoy the rewards of our own industry. And, you know, is Andy Kreiner being given that right right now? No, he's not. He's being denied that right. Um, and the pursuit of happiness. Are we allowed to go take our kids to soccer right now and enjoy, have a happy life? Um, you know, go to weddings and go to funerals and all that makes us human. And they are taking that from us. That's definitely an overreach. And this new mandate violates our religion. So this new mandate essentially violates the very first amendment to the Constitution, which is crucial to the foundation of America. The chapel's posture has been all along to honor government as they have handed down and issued um, certain mandates, but more to obey God. And um, the obedience to God for us comes from uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verses 20, uh, verse 25 specifically, but I'll read verse 24 as well. Let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Without going too deeply into the theology of this whole thing, the reality is we have been mandated by God Almighty to meet together, to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Uh, and we've tried to have that tricky dance between both of those and of course if it were to come down to which one takes precedent and priority of course obedience to God comes first over anything that we would uh, understand the government be asking us to do. If we were to violate our conscience, violate our ability to minister, uh, we would of course um, practice civil disobedience. It hasn't come to that point for us yet so we're trying to do the best we can do. And then this latest mandate comes out where it drops us back to 15 people per room. Well, that sets us into a whole new realm of having to adjust and adapt. And I know the mayor has used scripture to talk about uh, not bearing false witness. And scripture clearly states that. And I don't, can't speak to what false witness he was talking about. But at the same time, it needs to be recognized we have mandates that are above his mandates and any government mandate to meet together, to assemble together. And we're trying to do that respectful of what we've been asked to do from the government and the healthcare officials of our state and city, but at the same time, honoring God. Uh, but we do want to communicate to our community, we love Anchorage. And we want to do our part to be a, a blessed uh, influence in this community. Um, and we want to have a great 
uh, representation of the grace of the gospel of Jesus Christ in our city. The way the pandemic has brought to light the things that in this this illness that we've known about for a long time. You know, viruses have been with us for hundreds and hundreds of years, and you look at what happened in 1918. The lessons weren't learned. We think of Alaska as an island. Well, it isn't. We are as exposed as the lower 48 because of the people and what they've decided to do within the bounds of our state. And when the virus hit, the effect it had on me was, what? So what do you do with the what? Do you go ahead and panic? Or do you look at what it is? Or do you start searching out the answers? For me, it was an answer. I had to find out, okay, how is this gonna affect me and my health? What's it gonna do to the family? What's it gonna do to people? How can I affect others with the virus and stop the panic that I started to feel? And so I don't understand why we are still in this state of panic. And uh, it's just, I don't know. I'm, <clears throat> I have a friend who's definitely afraid of going anywhere because he's older than me. He's got heart. And that's the narrative that's been uh, pushed is that if you get COVID, you're going to die. There's just no two ways about it. And, it. and it couldn't be further from the truth. Um, I can't speak to any motive that the government, the local government has right now. Uh, I can say that what they have mandated has impacted a lot of folks more than just in terms of health, uh, physical health. Uh, it has also impacted people in terms of mental health. And that separation and isolation from one another, God did not create us to live as islands. He did not create us to live in in absence of relationship, face-to-face, one-on-one relationship, physical proximity uh, to each other. So um, I know that um, many of you are really concerned about how it's impacting personal uh, lives, separation, the isolation, the loneliness, the depression. You don't have to look too far to the news to see the accounts that this thing has caused a, a uh, uh, a very, very tragic amount of mental anguish for people. Uh, the suicide rates going up, depression rates going up, counseling uh, for those particular areas seem to be an upward trend because of what's going on in the isolation and the despair. My uncle passed away April, end of April, and it wasn't because of COVID. He had a heart attack at home out in the valley and um, my cousins, one of them had to fly up from the States and they put her in a two week quarantine, you know, it was April and things were kind of crazy. And so now um, everything is postponed till next year. We haven't been able to bury my uncle. We haven't, we haven't had any family get togethers in honor of my uncle. And the girls, my cousin had to go back to the States and she, I don't know, she'll come back next year, I guess, if they let us bury him then, which to me, that whole thing is messed up right there. What, seven funerals for a felon named George Floyd and did all of this huge gatherings for George Floyd and our little family can't get together and bury our uncle? What is wrong with this picture? Oh my gosh, the emergency orders, they've got to stop. I mean, they, they've got to stop. We do not have a crisis. Uh, we've got 38 people in the entire state that's hospitalized. I mean, the thing that is most aggravating about this whole thing is that we were told in the beginning, two weeks, we just need to shut everything down so we can slow the spread of this virus for two weeks, flatten the curve. Well, we flattened the curve. I mean, we, we stomped the heck out of the curve. But then it was, the, the goalposts started, started shifting. Then it was, well, we, we can't allow it to spread any further. We have to stop the virus. So it's not just a matter of flattening the curve. Now we got to stop the virus. Well, you're not going to stop the virus. And you're not going to stop it by picking and choosing who gets to stay open and who doesn't. And, and you sure as heck are not going to do anybody any favors by ruining an entire economy. I mean. What has happened in this town and what is happening in cities all over the country is just sad and it's devastating. 
because people are not allowed to work. It's not that they don't want to. It's not that they can't. It's that they're not being allowed to work. I take an oath as a state senator to uphold and defend the Constitution, and I see the constitutional rights being treaded upon right now. And as elected officials, we swear an oath to the Constitution. That means to uphold, and sometimes you got to step in the gap and defend the people's rights. So I'm here to defend the people's rights. We'll make sure that they hold every elected official, whether it's the mayor, whether it's the governor, whether it's your assembly, your school board member, your state uh, house, your state senator hold them accountable read this constitution read the declaration of independence why we broke away from george king george the third read the uh, united states constitution and the constitution of the state of alaska know your rights so they're not tread up i would tell them that all of life is a risk and it is my job to determine my risk that i'm willing to take for my life not theirs I do think there is a disconnect between the local government and the state government and how they're handling things. Uh, Governor Dunleavy does not have these restrictions imposed on small business owners and then indirectly affecting the population. Here in the municipality of Anchorage, that's different because I feel that they believe that they are leaders of a community versus representatives and that is to start actually representing the people for whom they serve. The most frustrating to me is the fact that the people that are doing this, the government officials that are doing this, not a single one of them has lost a dime of pay. Not a single bureaucrat anywhere that I'm aware of. It may be, it may be happening, but I'm not aware of it. Has not lost a single dime of pay. And so, where is the shared sacrifice? There is none. The sacrifice is totally on the private sector. There's no sacrifice whatsoever in the public sector. In fact, when tax time comes around, I fully expect that they're going to demand that we pay our taxes and we pay them in full, in spite of the fact that they've taken away our means for doing so. I'm not politically correct on any of them. What I'm looking at is they need to understand we're the ones that put them in office to start with. They work for us. And their power has gotten just a little bit too coagulated with benefits. And I'd like to see their health benefits dropped. I'd like to see them lose their jobs and look for work. I'd like to see them lose their house payments and their per diem. I'd like to see them all drop down for a good half a year. And welcome to what you've created in our world. And I think the pandemic has that ability to show the humanity that has been lost in politics, which is why it started in the first place. They need to start spending that money where it belongs. And that's with the people that have been hurt and destroyed over this entire process. I'll put it to you this way. $290 million was given to our governor. $290 million has been sitting in an account and they've only spent $25 million of that money in the, what, it's like 70 some odd days since he's had that money given to him? What is going on? Why is this the case? Credit Union One, what a big joke. They sat there on all those applications. They only got a, a few of them done, like, uh, like under 10. In, in, a, in a two month period, people are sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. I finally got a call, uh, I finally insisted. I said, somebody's got to get back to me on this. They said, oh, you don't, you don't uh, qualify. You don't qualify. So they just denied me. So now I have to go through the state on it. So the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing. And even that just basic humanity, basically caring about your fellow Alaskan, what, whatever happened to that? Where, where, that's all, where is that all gone to? You're destroying people's livelihoods. You're killing people here. And you have the audacity just to ignore us, to not say anything about it, and act like the, 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 everything's getting much better. We were presented that the first lockdown would cause corrections. It didn't happen. We're now being put in a second lockdown, saying that it will cause corrections. What if that doesn't happen? A third lockdown, a fourth lockdown, an indefinite lockdown? I mean, at what point are people going to stand up and say, Enough is enough. Your numbers don't match up. I reserve the right to be myself and move forwards. And when are people going to respect that? I think the vast majority of people here in Anchorage Municipality do not choose to wear a mask. 
they're obligated. Yes, actually, I did go to Walmart. And, um, the, you know, they got the Gestapo out there at the, <laughs> at the entrance. And they, they wanted to give me grief about coming in without a mask. And all I did was pull my one inhaler out of my purse. And then she waved me on through. I didn't have to say a word. I just showed it to her and she said, fine, you're good. So that was, I mean, nobody has made me leave. My daughter and I actually went out to a restaurant just last week after the mayor mandate. Uh, we went to the restaurant. They made us, which is also ridiculous. They made us put the mask on to get into the building. And then they walked us out to their um, open seating and then we got to take the mask off. When we were done with our meal, they they didn't make us put the mask back on as we exited the building, which I, I still don't understand why we had to wear it to get in and walk through their building to the outside eating area, but didn't have to wear it after we had enjoyed our meal and left the building. You know, the whole thing, none of it adds up, none of it makes sense, and yet there's so many people who have no problem, oh, I'm gonna put the mask on, and then they gotta be like, little Gestapo, you ain't got a mask on. One of the things I'd change if I was mayor, I'd get rid of that. Um, I'd drop all the, the emergency orders, I'd say, you know, let's get back to work, you know. If you feel like you gotta wear a mask, wear a mask, but I'm not gonna, not gonna mandate it. And I think, uh, you know, do what you think you need to do to protect your health, but the rest of you, get back to work if that's what you wanna do. I honestly think we're just going to have to let this thing take its course and it's going to kill off a few people, but I don't know what else to do. We can't sit here and live in fear and we can't sit, we sure the heck can't sit there and close down our entire livelihoods and our whole lives just to protect ourselves from, from the unknown. You're going to have to at some point let nature take its course and it's not going to be, it's not going to be nice and maybe it's me that goes because of that, but the thing is, is it's just got to happen. It's, it's what's got to happen. We can't stay hunkered down inside of our houses for the rest of our lives or, or hiding from everything behind a mask for all of our entire lives. We're going to have to let it take its course at some point. You know, my granddaughter came up from Idaho a month ago. She's 10 years old. She came to the house and she had a mask on, which infuriated me. Uh, and she said, air hugs, Nama. And I said, Bolt, we don't do air hugs around here. You get in these arms and you give me a hug and remove that mask because I need to see your beautiful face. And she did. She gave her Nama a good hug and you know, she's going home next week and I intend to see more time, spend more time with her, but it won't be wearing masks and it won't be air hugging because that is absolutely ridiculous. It's one of the things we want to communicate about life in Christ. We have hope. We have hope beyond this thing. This isn't, this doesn't own us. This pandemic doesn't own us. Uh, there's nothing new here, nothing strange here. This stuff has been happening. There have been way worse pandemics in our world uh, in its history. This is a, a small thing in terms of numbers, uh, a big thing in terms of impact for those whose lives have been directly impacted and have lost loved ones. Um, and it goes beyond that even to the loss of connection with loved ones. Uh, those are tragic realities and we live in, we're living those now. But in the scope of overall things of this world, uh, this is just another manifestation of our fallenness. There's boarded up businesses all over Anchorage. Boarded up, no more doing business. My friends at Urban Sushi right a block away from me, she couldn't handle it. She just, she couldn't wait any longer. She had to close up. She closed up first to, from all of us. Um, the, the, the restaurant to my right, they just just simply didn't open at all. They're not going to open until next year. They're in a little better position. They're able to do that. I, of course, uh, you know, wasn't in that type of a position to do so. And uh, uh, there was at least three or four within one block radius of me that, that closed down. And I know so many others, especially the mom and pop uh, tourism com companies that work out of their home or work out of um, uh, other people's studios or things like that, that they don't have a brick and mortar downtown. Um, they got hit really hard. And, and the there's a lot of them that are not coming back.
just because of it. You see this big pile of cash that's supposed to be used to help, you know, uh, people like uh, restaurant owners that are out of business or soon to be out of business because they can't work, because they can't have customers, because they can't work their business model. Um, and people who are behind on their rent supposed to help those folks. It's supposed to help the people who are directly affected by COVID. I was um, doing maintenance. I'm a maintenance worker. I have a career in plumbing and in the trades, but most recently my employment was uh, just doing maintenance in storefronts. As of last week, I was informed by my supervisor that I will no longer be employed. What I'm witnessing is it's very effectively being the people put against each other. We were told that the last time signage went up at the stores for the request of masks, simply request, that it was not for the store owners or the proprietors to become the police of the community. But yet that's exactly what happened. I think the best thing that we can do is start with our everyday choices. Vote with your dollar. Support the local business owners that support the rights that you're losing. So when we had Kreiners and Little Dipper doing what they were doing, people showed up and supported them and that's great. But we need to let our voices be heard. We had to take a stand, so here we are. I don't even live in Anchorage, but this is my hometown and I'm here to support my friends and family. Are you being heard? No! Are they listening to you? No! Well, let me tell you, I am, and there are others that are too. No more than 15 people on their premises. And that violates part of, our part of my religion, Christianity, because God calls us in Hebrews 10.25 to not neglect the gathering of yourselves together. All Alaskans, not a Republican, not a Democrat. These, these guaranteed constitutional rights are for all Alaskans. This pandemic has taught me to back up and look around at what this world has come to in its selfishness, in its self-centeredness, in its me, 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 I, I, I. It's taught me to look around and say, how can I protect myself? But in protecting myself, how can I set an example to others? I'm not going to say it made me afraid. It made me concerned about those more helpless than me. And I think the pandemic has brought out an awakening, a blinking of the eyes going, okay, so much for the security of our home, so much for the security of our jobs, so much for the security of the school is the right place to send our kids during the day because we work. I don't have any kids right now. My kids are up and gone. My grandkids are mostly out of school now, so I don't have a dog in that fight, really. But I, I think it's I think it's going to be devastating to the kids that are affected. And so we're going to have a whole... Uh, you know, two year span here where there's not going to be a lot of learning done uh, unless they're being homeschooled anyway. I think, I think that's, uh, you know, that's, that's not going to be affected too much. What's really going to be affected though is the fact that you've got a bunch of kids who, <laughs> they go to school, they go to a classroom to learn. There's, you know, mom and dad have got to work in most cases uh, and they, they can't stay home and homeschool their kids. But they're being made to because somebody made an arbitrary, and I think it's an arbitrary decision, that it's too dangerous to send the kids to school. But like we all said, I sure miss my hugs. I miss the communication that, that we've had. But then you have to, again, within yourself, step back and say, why is the one-on-one -on -one a most important thing to you? That's a self thing. There's a difference between selfish and selfless. One little word, one, one letter. He, this is a test for us and our humanity. So I realized that to pass this test, I have to pay all attention to all the challenges that are coming at me. And then I have to act accordingly to protect you, to protect anybody else that I come in contact with. I would ask people to please respect each other's freedoms. Please respect that other people make different decisions and if we do not empower others to live their lives, if we won't stand up for other people, how can we ask other people to do that for us?